All right, what's up everybody? This is Chris. We're back today with another tutorial on using the uh, Elation emulation software. Today, what I want to cover is using groups because groups are uh, very effective in making your workflow go faster when you're building your Qlis. Uh, so we're going to show you how to get those set up and what they're used for. Um, first things first, let's jump right into it. We have our session. I already have it set up. Um, if you don't remember from the last video or you haven't seen it, if you uh, start a new session, what it's going to do is give you a generic uh, session title, show, and a number, as you'll see here. Uh, what you're going to want to do is save as because you're going to want to rename this something far more useful. For our purposes, we're going to be Elation Tutorial. Save, that gives it the suffix, save as, give it a second. There we go, we're all set up on that end. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna set up your fixtures, which ones you're using. Again, you have the manufacturer's list right here of uh, a multitude of various lights. I have the American DJ Megapixels, so I'm going to go down and find those. There we go, Megapixel LED. I have two fixtures, set up your counts right here, hit add, and there are your fixtures. Again, I like to rename everything to keep it organized because things do get confusing fast, especially if you have uh, a lot of fixtures, which I don't, but you might, so uh, do it. <laughs> okay, so we have our patches set up. They've already been automatically addressed for us, which is fine because um, that's gonna work for me. Okay, so we're here in the main screen. We have our two lights set up here. Now, grouping them. Uh, basically, what grouping allows you to do is to alter uh, multiple segments of your light, or the entire light in general, uh, together. So rather than um, setting up your cues like we did last time, where you go in and click each individual section of your light, which can be extremely tedious, what you're going to do is create uh, a series of groups uh, with various combinations of uh, the parts of your light so you can access them uh, on the fly. So basically, we'll just jump right into this. That'll make it easier when you see it. We're going to rename our group because, again, if you have more fixtures than just two, you may want to set up groups for each set of fixtures and uh, you're going to want to title those properly. Again, organization makes your life a lot easier. Hitting add, that's going to bring you to the menu inside your group, which tells the group which sections of the light you want to have control over. So um, here we have the fixtures, which is the fixture as a whole. Uh, for my fixtures in particular, this is not use, uh, particularly useful because it doesn't really give you control over the sections of the light. It simply um, allows you to select the fixture window uh, section of the lights, and um, when you're programming your cues, it really has no effect on the actual lights for my fixtures. Um, so I use the subsection because each of my lights is broken down into eight subsections for each of the square uh, lighting, lighting sections, a lot of sections in there. Basically, you can click on any of them and using this button, it will send either all of them, odd, even, you know, it's all numerical, or individuals if you want to make it completely custom. For our purposes, we'll start with everything. You can see all our sections of the light are here. We're going to close that. We can close that. And we're going to click outside of here to make sure this whole thing is deselected. Now a quick word about um, this section here and this section here. Fundamentally they're exactly the same, they work exactly the same with the exception that these ones have uh, dimming faders. So it's really up to you if that's going to be something that you're going to need. Um, for the cue list that I build generally I put any sort of fade based uh, automation into the uh, cues as they transition between each other. So I don't find that using these is particularly useful for me. So um, I will use these guys up here. And to do that, uh, it works exactly the same as you did it before. 
you know, if you were patching them manually like so, you can get these guys going, give them a color, hit record, bam, it's in there. Make sure to clear that. And this functions the same way. You hit play, it goes. We'll turn that off. Uh, by the way, if you do want to turn these off after they've been activated, click and hold the button, and that disengages it. But we're doing groups, and we have our group set up. We're going to want to assign them up here. So rather than using this section here, what we're going to do is double-click on this window. Now this window gets us to the sub-menu of any of your faders or playback buttons and allows you to assign specific groups or cues or... Uh, stacks that you want to place in that. Uh, what we want to do is assign this to a group. As you can see here, we've already made our group. It pops right up. Hit OK. And now this turns blue, which means that the uh, group has been assigned to it rather than a set of cues. OK, so we have our first group set up. Now what we're going to do is select that which now activates all the subsections of your light and gives you control over the functions available down here. For our first cue, I'm just going to make a pink wash, take some red, take some blue. Why not? Hot pink. It's a new black. And now we have our cue set there. Uh, immediately afterwards, depending on how you want your cues to play back to back, I like to create a black out, which will uh, make the transition between the colors a little smoother. So by changing these back to black and keeping your beam setting up, you can now record a cue right behind that, which will tell the lights to turn off after they've completed the pink wash. <clears throat> so you have all these selected let's show how to set up a group where we're using just a section of it what i've already done is i've created a group for the even sections of my light and the odd sections of my light uh, i'll show you real quick if you want to do this we're just going to open that up what i've had to do is i've gone in and selected the ones that i want to become members of this group and used this button to set them here. Uh, I was incorrect when I said that the odd and even functions work with the submenu. They actually only work with the fixture menu. Um, the software has a lot of little quirks about it, and that happens to be one of them. So uh, just something to keep in mind while you're working. So you have that set up. Group's good to go. We'll close out of that window. And we're going to want to set that group up here. Go to our groups, and there's our even. We're OK. We'll close that window. And now we can set up cues with only the even numbered sections of your light. Let's just do bright red. We can record that back to back with that one. If you want it to fade to black immediately after, Make sure to bring all the colors down. Record that. Now we can clear out. And you've just created four cues that will now play back to back like so. Haha. <laughs> uh, last thing I forgot to mention if you do want your cues to loop around, you want to go into the cue menu, which gives you the uh, specific parameters you'll need. It's already set to loop, but what you're also going to want to do is change all these guys to follow. Because while loop will allow you to keep pressing the button to change between cues, follow will actually have them play back to back endlessly. Now, we have a nice pink fading out to red. That's the basics of groups, and I hope that this tutorial has been really helpful for you guys. I will put together something else to help your workflow, getting used to this software, uh, real soon. Thanks for watching, guys.